The aim of this video is to try and answer a complex question. How sustainable and economically viable is lobster stock enhancement to meet the needs of an increasing global population? The Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN states that by 2050, the human population is predicted to rise to 9 billion. And to meet this rise in demand, current global food stocks will have to increase by 70%. So in order to answer this question, we first have to ask another. Why lobsters? In 2009, Sarah Barento of the National Institute of Biological Resources based in Portugal researched the nutritional value of lobsters and their results found lobster meat to be a valuable nutrient source packed with amino acids, vitamins and fatty acids that are essential in preventing human cardiovascular and inflammatory diseases. Many organisations are looking into ways of increasing the availability of key food sources, one such food source being that of lobster meat. Globally, there have been different projects looking into the most efficient way to increase lobster stock levels. Trials in Norway and Ireland have shown that trying to rear juvenile lobsters just in a land-based hatchery is neither cost-effective or economically viable, whereas rearing in sea-based containers once they reach a certain level of maturity, demonstrates improved survival rates and holds the potential to deliver a low carbon system for sustainable aquaculture, providing a valuable human protein source at minimal unit costs. Aquaculture is the fastest growing food production sector in the world, accounting for more than 50% of the world's consumed fish. Static or decline in production from capture fisheries means that aquaculture is key in meeting the escalating demand for seafood associated with a rapidly growing human population and a growth of the world's middle classes. Accordingly, the next decade is expected to see an 8% rise in global seafood consumption, highlighting the importance of aquaculture diversification and development. The European lobster is a high-value species, not currently exploited in the aquaculture sector. In 2004, it was estimated that only 4.3% of demand was being met, and the estimated market was around 70,000 to 50,000 tonnes of live and frozen product, respectively. Supply of this species is limited to approximately 5,000 tonnes per year, coming from capture fisheries, based mostly in the UK and Ireland. High profit margins, combined with a significant supply deficit, make the European lobster a promising candidate aquaculture species. As Cornwall is home to a founding member of the European Lobster Centre of Excellence, we decided to visit the National Lobster Hatchery to find out more about their project researching an effective way to grow lobsters. The National Lobster Hatchery was opened back in 1998 and moved to its current location in 2000. The main objective of the work they do is to promote the concept of sustainability in fisheries and aquaculture and to improve the long-term productivity of the lobster fishery for all through an active stock enhancement programme. Before we start to examine the work the National Lobster Hatchery are doing on improving larval and juvenile survival rates to increase lobster stock numbers, we first need to understand what a lobster is and their life cycle. During their first few weeks of life, they undergo metamorphosis, which involves four molts before they evolve into the benthic dwelling organisms that we are familiar with. It is during this metamorphosis stage that the lobsters are most vulnerable, in the wild, only 1 in 20,000 lobsters survive the larval stage. In the lobster hatchery, the survival rate increases up to 3,000 in 20,000. The low survival rate in the wild explains why female lobsters, which are named buried hens, have evolved the need to produce up to 35,000 eggs at any time. Currently, the National Lobster Hatchery has a two-stage approach to help improve the survival rates of juvenile lobsters. Firstly, rearing the lobsters through their first few months of life. This rearing process starts from the moment the eggs hatch, through the initial larval stages, stages 1 to 3, where the lobsters live in large cone-like tanks. 
In the next phase, stages four and five, the lobsters are cared for in tanks called aqua hives, each in individual cells within a circular tray. This is to prevent them attacking and trying to eat each other, as juvenile lobsters have been found to be cannibalistic. These circular trays are then stacked and placed into the aqua hive, which has an automated system for supplying food, water and filtration. Generally, young lobsters are released back into the wild once they reach between one and three months old. However, in the last few years, the National Lobster Hatchery carried out two research projects, Lobster Grower and Lobster Grower 2. The aim of these projects was to see how effective ongoing rearing would be once the juvenile lobsters reached release age. Lobster Grower studied the design, structure and layout of different sea-based containers to identify which would be the best in terms of promoting growth and well-being for juvenile lobsters. Lobster Grower 2 used the selected containers from the results of Lobster Grower and examined how other factors would impact on growth and development among juvenile lobsters. Factors such as site, depth, shelter, food availability and pre-fouling. The present research project, along with other studies conducted in Europe on Homerus gamerus and in the USA on Homerus americanus, provides a foundation of evidence for on-growing lobsters in various sea-based containers, at low cost with no additional feed requirements and minimal maintenance. Through careful testing and development, sea-based container culture has potential to be a cost-effective method of rearing homerid lobsters that is well suited for large-scale commercial purpose. Future work should focus on identifying the correct environmental conditions for optimal production efficiency, undertake further technical developments in terms of container deployment and harvesting systems, and undertake a detailed evaluation of the economics of commercial production. We have spoken to Dr Carly Daniels, who is the Research and Development Manager based at the National Lobster Hatchery, regarding the current projects and research being undertaken there. So I've worked for the Lobster Hatchery for the last 13, 14 years. Um, people do ask me why lobsters. Certainly when I went to university thinking I was going to be a marine biologist, I did not think I would work with lobsters. I thought I'd be swimming with dolphins and whales. And, but lobsters are charismatic. They're an amazing species. There's so little known about them that every day is different. Uh, I come into work, I don't know what I'm going to experience. I don't know what I'm going to learn. Um, it's just brilliant. So lobster populations uh, actually collapsed around Scandinavian countries back in the 70s and 80s and that was due to overfishing. Um, there was declines in lobster populations seen around Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly in the late 80s and early 90s and the lobster hatchery was set up in response to those declining stocks. The National Lobster Hatchery was set up in the year 2000. Um, it was set up by the Chief Sea Fisheries Officer at the time uh, called Eddie Derriman. He basically spearheaded the project and the idea was that he'd bring in a, a preventative management measure um, through stock enhancement. And stock enhancement is basically growing up small larval animals that would normally be floating around in the plankton through those vulnerable stages in a more controlled environment where we can improve the survival rates and then releasing them back into the wild when they're, they're ready to, to fight for themselves. The National Lobster Hatchery is a stock enhancement, education and research charity. So the process with the, the lobsters um, has taken a long time to get right. So buried hens are brought in from local fishermen. Buried hens are, are just basically pregnant female lobsters. Uh, all the mating and maturation is done in the wild, so um, they mate naturally with males out in the wild. And the maturation of the eggs happens for about nine months. Um, they'll then release their, their larvae into our tanks. Um, the larvae will literally float to the surface. They are what we call phototaxic, which means they float towards the light. So they'll release their eggs at night time and then the larvae will literally float to the surface 
towards a light that we have in the tank. Then, then automatically collected into our collection cone that keeps them separated during the night time. During the first two weeks of their life, the lobsters will molt four times. The molting process is a very stressful process and they're actually changing in morphology, so shape and structure of the animal changes over that time period. So they go from a very small, what looks like flea almost, um, to, to what we call a superman lobster. So the lobsters have their claws out in front of them and they'll swim directionally in the water. Once they reach an old enough age, about two weeks old, the larvae are actually transferred into our juvenile system where they will spend the next two months of their life before we release them. The aquahive system consists of a cylindrical tank and within that we hold discs. In the discs they're, they're separated almost like honeycomb, um, so an individual lobster has an individual space within that, that honeycomb system. Lobsters are fed by pouring food into the top of the aquahive system and the food just literally moves between, between the little compartments that the lobsters are in and they'll just eat it as it comes up through but it actually settles on the cells as well and it allows the lobsters to graze over a longer time period. When they reach about two to three months old our lobsters are kind of big enough to fend for themselves and that's when we release them back into the wild and we do this in a few different forms. The most common form of release uses local dive clubs and what we do is we basically donate the lobsters to local dive clubs and they will go down and they will put the animals in an area that is suitable for, for release. So the divers will take the lobsters straight down to the seabed for us so give them protection on the way down to the seabed. Um, we basically give them aquahive trays that are turned upside down on top of each other that protects the lobsters. They take that down to the seabed, they then open the tray when they found a suitable habitat. So that habitat might be something that's got kind of seaweed cover, rocks, gravel, anything that they can kind of burrow and hide away in. It's an amazing process to see. So a shore release has to happen at spring low tide. Uh, so as soon as it gets to its low point, we'll, we'll walk them down as far as we can into kind of rock pools and areas that are uncovered when the sea retreats back. So the kind of areas that we look for um, when we're releasing it on shore releases, so the, the kind of rock pool areas that are uncovered by the, the spring low tides, will be areas that have got lots of kind of gravel, cobble, seaweed, any kind of cover that, that will protect the lobsters in the, the kind of first few hours of their, their life out in the open ocean.